thank you so much uh, for inviting me here. Um, by the way, my, oh, my name is Eris. I've been in the healthcare industry for about 29 years being an RN, uh, mostly in the clinical side, uh, as a bedside nurses. And I started my career as, as doing adult critical care, and then I moved to pediatric critical care, so that's now my interest. Um, and the topic that I get to talk to you about here is one of my passion, healthcare. How do you maintain integrity in healthcare, especially during turbulent times such as these seasons that we're now facing? Yeah. So, uh, so let's move on. Let's go ahead here. I, wanted, I don't have any um, disclosures to tell you, but I wanted to show you these numbers. Oops. Sorry. Sorry. Okay. This works. Oops. Okay, now. All right, I have nothing to disclose for this talk, but um, if you look at the board here, there are three sets of numbers there. The one on top, the one middle, and the one on the bottom. Um, this is the amount of, uh, the number of COVID we have as of yesterday in America alone. We have 43 million infected, 696,000 uh, dead, and 32 million recovered. So just to tell you the, mag the, the sheer magnitude of this virus that has infected our our country, and is, this is millions worldwide. I'm just talking about America right now. Um, so you know, um, in healthcare, um, integrity is a very vital requirement. Um, in nursing specifically, we have this interconnected set of standards and perspectives that we base our decisions and behaviors on how we fit to, these, uh, to our personal and professional and organizational standards and principles. Now, this current pandem pandemic that we have now face has created an unprecedented challenge and has called to widen our ethical framework in ways that we have not dealt with in the past. There were issues and situations that have led to severe crises that have created significant distress, moral distress, and conflicts, and resulted in negative organizational outcomes, even among seasoned nurses. Um, so, I want to show you this part here. This is our professional practice model in nursing. I've adapted, and there's, they come in so many different forms. This one is from Kaiser Permanente, one of the biggest employer here, healthcare employer in, in California. And traditionally, our foundation of our nursing practice has been patient-centered. Uh, you meet the needs of our individual patients, but now we are being tasked to enlarge that ethical framework to include the public health perspective. You have limited staff, limited supplies, limited bed availabilities, limited ventilators, and other resources we have. Well, we are asked to maximize the good and to minimize the patient harm. And in trying to meet the needs of so many people, many days we felt helpless and we felt hopeless. We have put our families and our communities at risk, and it's hard to make sense of so many of these things. And it's not that we are abandoning our patients or rendering um, less than optimal patient care. But how do we balance our patient obligations with the need of the bigger and the broader population? How does one accept the unacceptable with any degree of integrity? They say nursing is both a science and an art. You know, you have the good mixture of caring, presence with evidence-based knowledge and, attitude and knowledge and skills. Now, at the very core of our nurse-patient relationship is that ethic of caring. To practice with integrity means we are responsible with our own judgments and actions in ways that we believe is the right thing to do. As a nurse, how do I bring about the best outcome to the patients I serve? And how do I do that with integrity when I'm barely exhausted and drained out both physically and mentally every working day? Every working day. Um, so there is this poll that they do a survey every year and they ask people on honesty and, and ethical standards based on different professions. And in 2019, 2020, nurses top of the list, top the list. Second are medical uh, doctors, Third ones will be grade school teachers. Look at the bottom. If you can see it, it says here, members of Congress. I don't know how that went there. But, you know, on the outside, it looks good on us. We are on the top of the list among, in, among uh, honesty and ethical standards. But that's what it looks like on the outside. But inside, we have high level of workload. We have long working hours, 
and unbalanced nurse-patient ratios. There's conflicts between professional and corporate agendas. And these have caused significant stress and burnouts among nurses. In most healthcare organizations, you know, the leaders and the managers, they make sure that the staff are aware of and incorporate their organizational values and this in their decisions and actions. Some have even put um, this uh, in posters and, and pocket cards as marketing tools. But with this pandemic, the pressures from the organization have created conflicts between these value statements and the actual practice. Mm -hmm. Now, these have led to low staff morale, they have fostered cynicism, and acceptance of an ethical practice. Mm -hmm. Many hospitals here in California have bypassed a law requiring safe staffing ratios to, because of the sheer volume of patients coming in. They have no choice. People need care. Many nurses have held rallies from different hospitals across the nation. This is from Manhattan, the East Coast. They're re demanding safe staffing and proper patient protection. Some, a lot of other organizations have criticized these hospitals for not preparing enough, for not hiring or training more staff. Next one is from um, UCSF. And they're all over the nation. They're re demanding proper patient protection and safe staffing ratio. You know, as Christians, I believe that um, God has all the answers to all these tough challenges that we're facing. Where do we start? We can start with our relentless commitment to, and compassion to create infrastructures to deliver great medicine and care to the patients that we serve. When I was preparing for this talk, I came across this verse in the scripture. It's in first, oh, sorry. It's in first Colossians, uh, Colossians 1.29, sorry. To this end, I strenuously contend with all the energy Christ so powerfully works in me. Now, this is the Apostle Paul describing his ministry as a great struggle that he has to face every day to care for the body of Christ. It's not like a part-time gig or something on, on the weekends or the days that he feels good working, but it's a full-time service that demanded all his energy. God supplied the power. He wants us to be fully faithful in serving to Him in serving others. This should motivate us to push and endure forward despite being tired and overwhelmed to accomplish the mission and to help contribute to a healthier Amen. place. Amen. Now, this current pandemic, they have labeled the nurses, the medical professionals as heroes. Now, as Christian professionals in the healthcare industry, we cannot just be legalist, legalistic with the need the, we, with the need that we see in our daily practice. Um, it, you know, I'm okay with strike. It's true we can hold all strikes and demand for, advocate for safe staffing ratios and proper patient protections, but at the end of the day, the suffering is still there. Mm -hmm. And we have to act far beyond our normal call of duty and put our faith and compassion into practice. We become better healthcare professionals when we realize the impact of other people's misery. And we take steps to alleviate them and then seek his ways to remedy our own failures, inadequacies, and pain. I remember I was talking to one of our chaplains in the hospital and said, hey, we're slumped with COVID. Everybody, every unit here is COVID. Um, and we're running low on resiliency. What are we doing next? You know? And he gave me this very big, great, great example and said, imagine your wife just gave birth. Um, and you came home, and the dishes are not done, the food's not prepared. Do you get mad at your wife? You gotta adjust. We're in crisis mode. Um, so you gotta think of that way. We're not operating in a standard care anymore. You know, Idaho yesterday shifted to crisis management. How does that look like? It looked like maybe your patient or your relative will get care in the tent or in the hallway. Or your relative or your patient will probably not get dialysis because there's none available. Um, or he may not get the ventilator because he has comorbidities and they'll choose to give it to this person who has a higher chance of survival. Yeah. Rationing of care. We've been there. We don't want to repeat that again. Um, you know, it's not because of our best effort that we're going to de defeat this disease. You know, It's because of what God will do to us and through us 
if we allow ourselves to be used by Him. He says, My grace is sufficient for you, for you, my power is made perfect in weakness. This is 2 Corinthians. So, the, therefore, I will boast all the more gladly about my weakness so that Christ's power may rest in me. I know you're very, very familiar with that. The people here in this room are very familiar with that. Those people in the healthcare industries, we are tired and we just don't want to listen to any more of these things, but these, these words are true. They are true and they've existed and we know we can defeat it, but we cannot just rely on our own. We have to allow God to, to use us, work in us. Um, so this is my proposal for us. Practice, pause, and BS. What does that even mean? So we know, we know that integrity is a highly valued trait among healthcare professionals. In very chaotic and very fearful times, there were practices at the bedside that were questionable, and regretful decisions were made. And the impact was devastating to someone's life. Before the Christian professionals in the market in, in the healthcare industry, this could be an opportunity to demonstrate our integrity. So practice pause BS. What does practice mean? Practice being conscientiously genuine. If we make mistakes, and we do, and we do it on a daily basis, we must own up to it right away and seek guidance to remedy the situation. Integrity and honesty. These are the values that one doesn't live by when it's convenient. These values should be hardwired to the Christian healthcare professional at all times. Next one's pausing and reflecting. As Christian leaders, quiet time and prayers, they're essential in decision making. We need to find strategies to pause and disturb the patterns of fears and anxieties and conflict and anger if we are made to make this if we are to make the best decisions for our patients. We ask our, we reflect when we ask some of these questions, why am I here? Or why am I even this, do, even doing this work in the first place? Now the answers to our, to these questions will create or may create moral distress inside and could lead to threats in our integrity. My favorite question to ask at the beginning of my shift is for whom am I doing this for? Yeah. And I can tell it shift, it creates an internal shift in the way I start my, my work. And for whom am I doing this for? Of course they pay me, but for whom am I doing this for? I do this for the body of Christ. And that gives me an extra boost. And it tells me, hey, you need to hold her hand or his hand and pray with him. Um, in spite of the things that you're doing, you're doing you're giving medications, 10 different medications on each patient. And it becomes sometimes very draining and very stressful and you're tired when you go home, but you know, it will get you through at the end of the shift and give you an extra energy even after that. So we reflect and we pause. The B part of the BS is be willing to do uncomfortable work or uncomfortable labor. Mm -hmm. Whatever you do, work heartily as for the Lord and not for men, Colossians 3, it says there. Um, there's still so much work to be done, especially in healthcare. We, we haven't defeated this COVID yet. There could be a fifth wave, a sixth wave, or what? Or who knows? But we must continue to be watchful in practicing behaviors to help keep us safe, even after vaccination. Mm -hmm. Leaders should make themselves accountable and not transfer fault to others. And we've seen this many, many times during our search. Performance expectations should not be conveyed in a way that highlights the results at the cost of achieving those results. You know, departure from acceptable practice should be addressed and not look at the other way. It's good to learn to be assertive. It's a good virtue to cultivate so that we can protect an ethical position from a Christian point of view without being antagonistic. The Bible verse here in Colossians says that it's a good reminder for those of us who serve that our ultimate goal is to glorify our Heavenly Father. I mean, in the end, our rewards are with Him and not with the people we work for. So let us serve Him. Let us serve as if we are serving Him. And then the S part is submit the outcome. 
you know, sometimes the outcomes you hope for doesn't turn out the way you planned it. One must be at peace with the notion that success is not always guaranteed. At times, it's much easier to try and fail and eventually learn. In a much more complex healthcare scenario, nurse leaders with integrity are expected to have a decision-making structures in such a way that complex decisions are not produced by a single individual and that the beliefs and principles are compatible with the members and organizational values. So in conclusion, I'd like to, to leave you with this slide here. You know, for those who are in the medical field, in the medical healthcare industry, sometimes we are the last thread of compassion for so many patients. We have witnessed pain and suffering and dying alone and not having their families and loved ones beside them. And as a nurse, skills of compassion, of empathy, of trustworthiness, and fairness, and respect, and courage in the middle of this chaos. And we have the skills to provide ethical care. We also ought to respond with compassion, not only to the patients that we serve, but also to ourselves, our colleagues, and our leaders. And as we increase our perspective, we should remember why our skills matter, so that we can continue to live our values best we can. There are hard choices we make every day that we never thought we'd have to, but yet we must. It's never easy. And there will be moral residues and unmet and unprocessed distress. But we cannot meet the needs of everyone. And we must try to find ways to heal as a person and as a community. And we must come to the realization that our own integrity hinges not on perfection, but on commitment to live our values best we can in turbulent times, especially in turbulent times. The slide here is a doctor in the ER texting the chargers in the floor, hey, we need a bed, we're slammed here. And the nurse is replying, we don't have a bed. You're gonna have to do your cares, put your patient on a bed later in the hallway, in the tent, and wait till somebody oh, dies and we will get rid of that body and have a bed for you. It's a very, very difficult situation right now. And it's not just California. It's all over the world. We're lucky here we have enough vaccines. We're lucky we have enough supplies of uh, ventilators. But we don't have enough staff. Um, COVID economy is very good for nurses right now because they pay top dollars for travelers. Hey, you know, it's, it's a very difficult time. So may God continue to bless us all. Thank you so much for your time. And I need you.